Alrighty guys, I'm back with another little video clip. After you put, put the stick walls up and your top plate on top of those, you're going to move on to putting your trusses up. I don't know if it matters. You could probably put siding up and then put your trusses up. I just happened to put my trusses up next and then sheeted my trusses and then put the siding on my trailer. So, as far as the, the trusses, I built them all in, at once. I bought a bunch of plywood. I wanted the arced look, but I didn't have a jig to bend plywood. So, I cut the arcs out of the plywood and then stacked them and glued them together. There are three sheets of plywood thick. It's three quarter inch plywood. So, they are pretty thick trusses. But... I cut the arcs out of the plywood and then I laid them out and I overlapped where the joints were with the plywood because uh, the plywood is only eight foot wide. Well, my walls were slightly wider than eight foot, like eight foot three inches, eight foot four inches, something. So I had to have a joint in those pieces, those arcs that I cut out. So I just staggered the joints in those that three layers so they wouldn't all the joints wouldn't be in the same layer and make it weak glued layers of plywood and then screwed after that and then I laid them all in my trailer and sanded them all down and as you can see in the picture I actually made the the trusses before I put the walls up and I used a belt sander to sand them all smooth and sand them all to the same arc so I built the arcs on the trusses and then I added a two by four on the bottom. I used the brackets you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. You pound them into the piece of, pieces of wood with a sledgehammer and it holds them together. It's the way trusses are made nowadays. They're really secure. And then you put your trusses up top and put them 24 inches on center. I started at the tongue of the trailer and worked my way back because there's a porch at the very back. So after I got my trusses up, 24 inches on center, I put my OSB up across my trusses. I didn't take the whole eight foot and go across the top because it was gonna be too hard to make it arc that much. But I put it kind of lengthwise and I used a strap, one of those ratchet straps to go and hold it down to the arc. So I got the sheeting up on the top of the roof and then I did the walls. And what I used for the outside walls was 15 30 seconds, five ply plywood. I went with a five ply plywood instead of a five ply siding because the siding has that groove cut in it every eight inches, I think. And that groove goes halfway through the plywood. So my thinking is number one, that's gonna let heat and, and cold transfer in and out of that trailer more because of that groove cut in each one. That's going to be a, a weak point for your insulation. Not only that, but it's going to be a weak point for shear factor. Unless you put a whole bunch of nails in holding this piece up, your your shear resistance isn't going to be there if you as if you used a regular five ply sheet of plywood. And I know I've got the straps to hold the walls square and the metal straps do a lot for, for the shear factor. But you want as much shear rating as you can for something that's going to be mobile and it's going to be going down the road. Because as you go down the road, the trailer's going to want to flex. The, the actual trailer part is going to want to flex. And you don't want your walls to be able to let it flex because the more it lets it flex, the weaker it's going to be. To cover the seams, I used a piece of 1x4 trim siding. And around that, I, I used caulking to seal that so that no moisture was going to get into the seams of this structure and be able to rot it out. Your Tyvek paper is like a moisture barrier. So if anything does get through your, your siding, it stops at the moisture barrier. You don't want a bunch of moisture transferring between your walls. So Tyvek paper windows, siding. 
the Tyvek paper, I just wrapped it and then went inside, went to the, where the windows were, cut an X in it, pulled it in, wrapped it around, stapled it down, cut off the extra trim. On the outside, on the siding, because I used plywood and it's got some knots and some cracks in it, I used a stuff called a Pro Bond Wood Filler. It's made by Elmer's. It's a little pricey, but I just went around and filled all the little knot holes that were voided out. Any cracks, anything, I just filled it with that wood filler. It works really nice. I just used a putty knife to smash it in there and then came back a couple hours later and sanded it off. So you get it all sealed up. You put a layer of primer over the whole thing. A lot of paints nowadays are primer plus paint, but I still used primer first. I let that dry for a day, and then I started the paint process, which I'm still not quite happy with. The first time I painted it was way too blue and way too green. Couldn't handle it, so I went and got more paint, lightened the colors up. I'm, I'm still going to repaint it. I'm probably going to go with like a light tan and a, and a dark brown trim on the outside just like some of the stuff on the inside is. That's pretty much it for the walls and the roof until you get to the actual roofing. I put 30 weight tar paper down first over the OSB roofing and then I put galvanized sheet metal across the width wise and then I sealed the seams with a, uh, a rubber coating that you can get at Lowe's. It's a thicker, there's two steps to this stuff. One is a thicker rubber that you put over the seams and over any kind of cracks or holes. And the second is something you roll on with a roller. It's the same stuff I use for my, underneath my floor. It's like an elasto covering for flat roofs. And I just rolled it on with a roller. It's rained a little bit on it and it, it looks beautiful other than the dust and dirt that it kind of smeared around when it rained because it's kind of dusty out here that's my roof I have a feeling in the rain you're gonna hear it more because it's a metal roof um, even with the elastic coating you're probably gonna hear it a little more but that's it for my my outside walls and my roof um, what I used how I did it the different steps I took I hope it's kind of informative um, I hope you're enjoying seeing this thing kind of come together for me. It's been about four months worth of a build, so it's taken a long time, and there's really no way I could have videotaped myself doing it because everything is such a pain in the butt to do by yourself. But it's been fun, and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the videos, and I will make another one soon. Take it easy. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you see the next video when it comes out.